the most profound game ever made. To be who he has played near at least near automatic who he has played near automatic in case you're new to this channel you're gonna need some context back okay, in sure. february of 2019 i put out a video titled the most profound moment in gaming history the moment in question was a scene at the end of metal gear solid 2 sons of liberty Naturally, oh, with a seen declarative the type, title like, like that, I was going to invite people who disagreed with my choice and wanted to propose either an alternative moment or game that they felt was more profound. In the interest of being intellectually honest, I wanted to play as many I of the games it. that people suggested and contrast them with Metal Gear Solid 2 to see if there was a game or a Thanks moment that might transcend it. Sick. I have spent the past five years doing that on this channel, and during that period, I have not encountered okay. a single moment that I believe is more profound. But I have encountered two games that I feel were more profound on the whole. One Bear? was the original Deus Ex, which Never I believe it. is the most important game ever made, for both its really? prescient story and the way its game design influenced so many games that came after. However, Who if I'm speaking just about profundity, I do place one game above Deus Ex, that, one two, that of course you being should. Near it's Automata. Amazing. While I have publicly expressed this belief once or twice over the past five years, I've not qualified that belief as comprehensively I as I would like. And now I, I think it's so time much. to make my case. I've been thinking about I've been thinking about replaying uh, Automata Man because I, I just love the story so much. I haven't gotten all the endings. I've gotten Yeah, I think I've gotten over half the endings too, but I've not played it. I've not played it. Uh, what? I've not played all of them. I've not gotten all of them. Is it just a hack and slash? It's mostly a hack and slash, yes, but it's... Oh. First, Let's watch the video. I think it's Let's worthwhile establishing a mutual definition of it's profound. It's more than just a hack and slash. that word can mean a lot of different things to different people. That's In my true. case, I draw upon the Merriam-Webster definition of profound, meaning to have intellectual depth and insight. Although I personally add the adjective emotional to that definition. So when I define a game as profound, I do not refer to its overall quality. I strictly refer to its insight into emotional, mm -hmm. philosophical, and other intellectual matters. Now, I do not believe that Nier Automata is the greatest in any single yeah, one of these categories. I do not believe its content is more philosophical than games like Disco Elysium or Planescape Torment. I do not well, believe it is more intellectual <laughs> than the aforementioned Deus Ex or something like Xenogears. I do not believe it has the same emotional highs as games like Shadow of the Colossus or The Last of Us, but that's... Okay, The Last of Us I've played. If you compare both games on the surface level, The Last of Us will like The Last of Us is easier to understand on the surface level, I would say, because the story is right there in your face. For Neo Automata, you you have to go deeper into it. You have to go deeper into it. You have to go way deeper into it. You have to go out of your way. Well, not really out of your way, but you have to, like, be wanting to experience the game. And in that case, I would say Nier Automata is more emotional than The Last of Us. The second... We don't talk about The Last of Us Part 2. We don't talk about that Set. here. I do believe Nier Automata is the greatest accumulation and balance of all those and other categories. That In short, okay. Nier Automata takes the entire corpus of existential philosophy and distills it into parabolic form, making the core ideas of that philosophical tradition. Nier? Doesn't... Um... Do not spoil anything too much. I don't know how much he's going into spoilers, but Nier is a tragedy. Nier is a tragedy. It's a theatrical tragedy, I would describe it as. Accessible to every type of person. 
Granted, this distillation forces Nier Automata's examination of these ideas to not yeah, be so as expansive you, or as complex case. as they are in games like, say, Pathologic 2 or the Talos Principle. Nonetheless, the core meanings of these ideas, along with their often emotionally gut-wrenching content, are preserved, despite their simplification. The reason why Nier Automata invokes so much existentialist philosophy is because, at root, the game is trying to answer the most important philosophical question of the What's past the millennium. And What's it makes the meaning this of life, attempt by basically. throwing every existential idea at it like the pods shoot energy balls. It is a spiritual question that we continue to struggle with in the present due to its intellectual and emotional difficulty. And it's one we must come to a consensus on soon, for if we don't, our reality could see its reflection in this game. I will lay out that philosophical question and the various genius ways in which Nier Automata attempts to address it. But before I do, a quick word on spoilers. The first half of this video will be spoiler free, save for a synopsis of the game's go, story Jack. and Here setting. I will give ample warning before I go into the second half where I detail specific characters and storylines. If you have to dip out, so make sure to, to bookmark this video and come back there. to it when you're done. Whenever you need to leave, just leave. I'm, I'm completely In order fine to with outline that. the depth and scope of Nier Automata's core philosophical question, we first need to go back roughly 400 years. There was a time in the Western world when publicly questioning or criticizing religion was a crime punishable by death, but the sole reason was not due to a baseline fealty to God. One of the biggest reasons was a belief that doing so was deleterious to the fabric of society. I believe that the English Lord Chief Yay, Justice religion. of 1676, Sir Matthew Hale, summarized this argument best when sentencing a blasphemer to death. To criticize religion was to undermine the laws of society. What he meant by this is that Western civilization's social cohesion rested on a belief in two core things. One is that humans were flawed and broken, but the second is that by trying to emulate God, specifically the ideal set by Jesus Christ, one might redeem their flawed nature. This was the meaning of life for centuries. It's so funny how religion used to be like that while they changed the meaning of things. We're watching a video about um, why Neo Automata is the most profound video game ever. What's the video I say we're watching? In the West, the meaning that enabled people to contend with life's immeasurable suffering. But in the next few centuries, seeds would be sown that would inevitably uproot this philosophy. The Reformation was arguably the first of these seeds. I'm so sorry for pausing again, but the background music is already giving me fucking PTSD emotional flashbacks, man. The background music is giving me PTSD from near, man. In case you don't know, the Reformation was an intensely conservative religious reaction by a segment of Christians against the Catholic Church. Though it was a movement motivated by many factors, particularly what was perceived as corruption within the church, I will focus in on the one reason most relevant to Nier Automata, the segment of Christianity. This? This was... On the one bro. reason most relevant to Nier Automata. This is something that happened in game. Literally. Like... At the time when I saw it, this, I wasn't even thinking of the fucking religious parallel, man. I wasn't even thinking of the religious parallel here. Oh my god. Mind blown. The fucking segment mind of Christianity blown. that would go on to define themselves as Protestants retaliated against Your the Katara, influence man. that the famous Italian priest, Thomas Aquinas, had on their theology. Specifically, his attempt to marry Christianity with the Aristotelian spirit of reason. The Protestants, led by Martin Luther, believed that God had Martin absolute sovereignty Sorry. over our existence, and any attempt to introduce reason into that would undermine God's plan. I like the sentence, reason is a whore. <laughs> This, alongside many other reasons, led to a theological split between the Catholics who embraced reason and the Protestants who did not. 
For the next century and a half, the Enlightenment philosophers who embraced reason warred over whether or not it should be married with faith in a higher power, or if reason negated the existence of God entirely. Philosophers like Spinoza and Diderot believed that a radical embrace of reason alongside a negation of God would be the foundation of the West's new social order. Philosophers like Immanuel Kant and John Locke, though believers in reason, were skeptical about the human capacity to operate purely on reason without God, given our inherently flawed nature. This ideological divide would become exacerbated by the political revolutions that characterized the era, like the French Revolution and the European Revolutions of 1848. Radical rationalists saw these revolutions as a concrete expression of social Shut progress, up. while more conservative thinkers saw the bloodshed of these wars as proof of the insufficiency of reason. As the philosopher Edmund Burke argued, Humans have neither leisure nor knowledge sufficient to reason right. Will not honest instinct, prompt, and wholesome prejudices guide them much better than half reasoning? Holy shit, this is some deep thinking right now, holy shit. Like, I can't speak for other human beings, right? I can only speak for myself on the matter here, is I was raised in a religious household, um... Not a Christian household, but a Muslim household, uh, but a very religious driven one. And I separated myself from that. I separated myself from that. I, uh, but at the time being, while I was still growing up, to me, I never thought about what's the meaning of life. But now that I have separated myself and that I have become my own person, now I'm just like, what's the point? What's the point of living? I am deeply afraid of death. I am deeply scared of death. And I know that a lot of people turn to religion because of that fucking reason. So to me it makes sense that there's a lot of religious people. That's just, that's just my two cents to this. Got to go kids, I'll jump back in later. Then came that's the fair. coroner Goodbye. of this ideological war. The one whose philosophy sits at the foundation of Automata. Friedrich Existence Nietzsche. Pain. He, a famous yeah. atheist, determined that the fruits of the Enlightenment and the advent of science had killed any credibility that religion once had, particularly of Christianity. Thus, time. he made no. the famous proclamation that God was dead and we have killed him. Though some <laughs> who adopt the Spinozian spirit saw this as a positive, triumphant declaration, Nietzsche was far more pessimistic. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. To learn, to prosper, to grow. The meaning of life is joy. This is spread joy, share joy, be joyous. I hope so. I don't know if it's just me, but you know how one may expect that a lot of the English VTubers would be in America. Surprisingly, many are actually in Canada. It's just interesting. Huh. Even displaying sympathy for the likes of John Locke's perspective in this regard. Though he felt that humans would have to create their own values in a world that was devoid of God or meaning, he didn't think that we would be able to do it due to our Yo, Jack, inherent imperfection. Hey. Thus, he predicted in his book, The Will to Power, that attempts to craft our own values would result in bloody conflict, a prediction that came to frightening fruition in the 20th century. This oh is an boy. incredibly basic overview of an enormous philosophical problem with no universal answer. And yet, Nier Automata boldly decided to build its world and story around it. Everything that lives is designed to end. We are perpetually trapped in a never-ending spiral of life and death. Is this a curse? Or some kind of punishment? I often think about the god who blessed us with this cryptic puzzle, and wonder if we'll ever have the chance to kill him. These opening no, lines to be the English are a voice, perfect man. summation of this ideological conundrum. Let's hear that again, though. Jesus. Everything that lives is designed to end. We are perpetually trapped in a never-ending spiral of life and death. Is this a curse? Or some kind of punishment? I often think about the god who blessed us with this cryptic puzzle, 
and wonder if we'll ever have the chance to kill him. Wow. It's been a while since I've heard the starting lines of the game. It's been quite a while since I heard the starting lines of the game. Like, looking back at it, this makes absolute sense that Tubi would say this and feel this way. Wow. I want to talk about it, but I don't want to spoil yet in case people uh, still want to dip out. So, I'll, I'll, I'll hold back for the time being. These opening because lines he will say are a when perfect we go into spoilers. summation of this ideological conundrum. It encapsulates the resentment that arises from this need for God to give meaning to life's suffering, despite the fact that this God, if he exists, remains invisible and silent. In his absence, one has four choices. One can continue to seek God, one can seek symbolic revenge against God by destroying his creation, one can die, or one can attempt to create their own meaning. Nier Automata uses its story to explore these four options, showcasing their merits and deficits. Not only are these arguments easily digestible in their parabolic structure, the game's story writer, Yoko Taro, introduces an element Yoko that Taro, provides man. innovative insight to this philosophical problem. In Just saying, Yoko Taro only shows himself with this mask. Yokotaro only shows himself with this mask. We don't know what Yokotaro looks like. This man is insane. He is literally clinically fucking insane. And I think... I think you need to be insane to write a good story. You do need to be fucking clinically fucking insane to write a good story. And he is. This is an element that provides innovative insight to this philosophical problem. Instead of having humans debate this issue, he has robots and androids debate it 10,000 years in the future. Thanks for the follow, dude. The year is 11,945 AD. The remnants of humanity have been living on the moon for the past 5,000 years. Their current circumstances were spurred by the arrival of an alien race that attempted to wipe out the human species, which they did via the creation of antagonistic machine life forms. Roughly 200 years after this escape to the moon, the humans launched their counteroffensive. They created an elite military force of advanced androids to fight on their behalf. However, since their initial pushback in 5204 AD, they have yet to break the stalemate between the alien-created machines and the androids fighting on humanity's behalf. For the first half of the game, we play as two androids, one named yes. 2B and another named 9S. In their journey to destroy the machines and save humanity, they will interact with various allies and enemies, most of whom are dealing with their own existential woes and trying to solve them in their own way, usually by echoing the philosophy of an existentialist or a prominent figure from the Enlightenment era. And yes, that machine was wearing a top hat. This machine has a top hat, yes. Before I analyze those characters and the ways their philosophies are showcased, I do want to add a couple of extra thoughts on the game's presentation and setting. It is very typical of Yoko Taro to use a po- 2B9S, 2B9s? I don't know, maybe. Damn, I didn't even look at that yet, Yoko, damn. Is this a game review? It's a essay. It's an essay about um, Automata, um, why it's the most profound video game ever in, well, his opinion. Using elements in a game in order to provoke the gamer to think. In his first directorial effort, Drakengard, he would Drakengard. take common you guys. action game tropes and flip them, like make our supposed heroes villains, or have the characters constantly chastise us for killing our enemies. In the first near game, the story would frame certain events in order to make us perceive them one way, and then introduce information later that betrayed that original perception. This trend continues in Nier there, Automata yeah, by telling a story about androids and robots as a way to comment on humans and their nature. Their attempts to emulate or interpret human thoughts and behavior Yes, this is a machine orgy going on. There's a machine orgy going on on screen right now, chat. 
This is a machine orgy. Behavior are done clumsily, often to humorous effects. This immediately puts the gamer in a philosophical a mindset, making them wish they could interject and either suggest the correct way to behave or at least an alternative. However, there will be times where the game challenges this desire to interject by introducing a philosophical conundrum that has no clear answer. Then, in our attempts to provide an answer, we end up struggling in a way that is equally as clumsy, which in turn breaks down the divide between man and machine. Ultimately, a game about mechanical life forms becomes ironically one of the most human games ever. Made. Literally, Finally, literally, I just want to it's insane. On the, way the game's world fosters that aforementioned philosophical mindset. Taking a page from games like Journey, Dark Souls, Dark Souls, and Shadow of the Colossus, there are many times where the game will provoke feelings of depressive isolation as you run around its desolate, dilapidated world. As the soft, ambient music plays, you cannot help but reflect on why the world around you ended up the way it is now. Also, the beautiful... Uh, the world is so beautiful, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but I feel like nature taking back the world, basically, like post-apocalyptic more or less. Like, post-post-apocalyptic, actually, where nature is taking back its world. I think that is such a beautiful fucking theme, and it's done so well in Nier, and also in Zero Horizon Dawn. Horizon Zero Dawn, sorry. It's done so beautifully, and there's just something weirdly nostalgic about it what philosophies led to its destruction, and what part your beliefs might play in its future. Though your journey through the barren landscape might not invoke the peak emotional highs it. from those aforementioned games, it does foster some of the best transcendental meditation that you can receive, be it from a game or any medium. At this point, I would like to detail the ways in which the game's various characters address the game's underlying philosophical question. But before I do, I will issue that promised spoiler warning. If you Here have not go. played Nier Automata, please do not spoil for yourself this unique, masterful work of art. If anyone wants to step out now for a while, um, come back in about 20 minutes and the video should be done. Thank you. Please pause this video and go play it as soon as you can. Taking a cue from a deeply profound game like Xenogears, most of the character names in Nier Automata are references to real-life philosophers and other intellectuals. And oh. just like Xenogears, sometimes those- This- this boss fight! This boss fight is one of my favorite boss fights! And now I'm going to talk about spoilers too. The, in this boss fight, you constantly start... If it's that exact one... Uh, you fight the same fucking machine in the end, in the boss fight that I'm thinking of. It's the second to last boss fight in the end, and in that boss fight you constantly swap perspectives between A2, another android you start playing later on in the story, and 9S. And to me, that's the best boss fight I have ever ever played i love this fight so much this is the one where you shift perspective between the characters yes that's the one i'm talking about genius ingenious design references can mean absolutely nothing or absolutely everything in the case of machines like Hegel or Marx, their names reference the German philosophers George Wilhelm Hegel and Karl Marx. But their I respective had idealist no idea. and socialist philosophies bear very little, if any, impact on the game's overall story. However, machines like Simone, Kierkegaard, and Emmanuel are very relevant to the game's main theme. Now very quickly, before I explain why they are relevant, I do want to make one last comparison to Xenogears. Though that game is an undeniable masterpiece, its attempts so to reference various it. complex ideas from various subjects did make it too ambitious for its own good. 
Though it fulfilled most of its ambition, I do think its true depth is probably lost on people who do not have a basic grasp on psychoanalysis or esoteric religious traditions like Gnosticism and Kabbalah. In contrast, Nier Automata focuses mostly in on just philosophy, and distills a variety of complex ideas into a mostly accessible form, all while not compromising any of their majesty. The best way to set things up is with the story of Emmanuel. There is so much I already know about Emmanuel, and there is still so much I don't know about Emmanuel. Like, okay, 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 let's, let's continue. I'm quite, I'm quite excited to see what he's going to talk about, actually. One day, 2B and 9S encounter a kingdom of machines in the forest. This kingdom broke off from those warring against humanity and the androids, wishing to pursue their own destiny. Initially, this kingdom was established by a robot named Ernst, who ruled as king for 128 years. One day, Ernst dies, and supposedly has his consciousness transferred into a baby robot model. The robots of the Forest Kingdom expect this baby to grow just like a human does, but after another 128 years pass, they finally realize that the baby is not growing. Huh, yeah. really? Took you a century to notice that? The name of man- <laughs> Come on, lad. Leave the poor machines alone. Emmanuel is a reference to the aforementioned Immanuel Kant, and in this case, his philosophy of the thing in itself is being invoked. To Kant, he believed that human beings were unable to perceive the world around them as it actually is, due to their inherent imperfection. In effect, they could only create semi-corrupted representations for themselves, but never truly perceive the thing in itself. Like, like I mentioned- So I'm guessing like the actual essence of the being. Definitely gonna revisit Nier. I feel like replaying it at one point again, yeah? Before. This is one of many examples of the machines trying to understand and emulate human behavior, but clumsily doing so. They are unable to perceive the robot baby as it truly is, thinking it is just like a human baby that will grow. Though we see the error in their thinking, we are not so different from them, in that our understanding is also Bro! limited by- Bro, A2 just coming in and killing the baby king? Bro, why she do this? Why she do this? Why you do this, A2? <laughs> this make me so sad. By our imperfect bodies and minds. Now if perception is limited, one can logically infer, as Kant did, that this applies to human reason and the ability to create one's own values. This view is justified via many characters in the game. In the case of the character of Simone, she tries to give her life meaning by beautifying herself in order to garner the love of a robot named Jean-Paul, a striving was that was antithetical too. to the feminist beliefs of the philosopher she was based on, Simone de Beauvoir. Oh. In the case of the character of Kierkegaard, he promises his overzealous religious followers that they will become like gods through rituals. This was the exact opposite of the real Kierkegaard, who, though an ardent Christian, was against collectivist Christianity and dogmatic rituals. On and on, every character fails to create their own values through reason, as Nietzsche believed we needed to do. Ironically, one might reason from this, as Kant, Locke, and Burke did, that reason without God to guide us is insufficient. Though Nier Automata makes a strong case for that, it makes an equally strong case for the opposing argument, and the primary exhibit is the character Pascal. Pascal. He is- Pascal is definitely one of my favorite characters. Pascal is so adorable. It's named after the French proto-existentialist Blaise Pascal, who is oh most famous God. for his philosophical argument known as the Wager. Pascal likens belief in God to a sort of coin toss. Either God exists, or does well, not he exist. He believed <laughs> that it was better to believe God exists, and act as if God will judge you for your morality upon death. 
That way, when you die, Makes you will sense. go to heaven if he does exist. If he doesn't exist, then you will lose nothing upon death. To In all honesty, that makes a lot of sense. I hate to admit it. Belief he doesn't exist when he does would, theoretically, equate to an eternity in hell. Though this seems like a reasonable argument at first, Yoko Taro quickly eviscerates it when applying its logic to an artificial consciousness. Unlike with humans, Adam. a machine's consciousness would not go to heaven upon death, because their mind does not share a theoretically divine link to the natural world. So dark. The created beings. So cool. The inference from this is that there is no transcendent reward to acting morally in this life for a machine. So... I wonder if he's gonna touch upon the topic that there's constantly a um, sibling theme going on in all of Nier. Like constantly it's about a uh, Nissan. Nissan! My beloved Nissan! What is to stop them from giving into feelings of resentment and murderous hatred when life gets too painful? This question is explored with the robot Pascal. He was a pacifist machine who, like the members of the Forest Kingdom, split <laughs> off from the warring machines in order to pursue peaceful coexistence with the androids. Though this peace is maintained for the majority of the game, it is upset when the leaders of the androids infect their troops with a logic virus, causing them to become mindless yet more effective berserkers when making a final push on the machines at the end of the game. This logic virus spreads to the machines and causes them to attack one another. Thankfully, Pascal manages to save a selection of child machines from the virus and others infected by it. But when Pascal returns to the child machines, after successfully fighting back the infected, he discovers the most horrifying thing imaginable. All the children ran themselves through, out of fear of what might happen if the infected machines found them. Oh my god, bro. This is so gut wrenching. This was. Oh! Oh my god. I. I. I have no words. But the horror of the situation and the despair it brings Pascal are not the worst parts. Rather, it is the guilt Pascal feels for teaching the machine children the concept of fear. Their fear brought them to despair, and that despair made them end their lives. With this unimaginable pain, Pascal decides he cannot go on living. So, he asks the player to either kill him or wipe his memory, which you can either refuse or accept. Now, it's easy to say, if you're religious, that self-termination out of despair is a sin. Even if you aren't religious, it's easy to say that the moral choice is to find a new meaning to strive for. I quit the game after that full week. Wow. Wow. <sighs> this just left a fucking hole in my heart again, man. What did you do? <laughs> like, what did you do? I I deleted his memories. I could not bring myself to kill Pascal. I could not bring myself to kill Pascal. I deleted his memories. But in that moment, when the ones you love lie dead before you, and you feel overwhelming guilt for this occurrence, those principles easily become negated. Especially when you're a machine whose actions theoretically have no religious consequence. In times like these, one can see the utility that a belief in God could have to keep somebody from giving in to despair. But when that God is silent, when that God does not show you a way to deal with that unbearable emotional burden, then the temptation to curse God and his creation becomes too great. In the worst cases, that resentment takes the form of revenge against God. For Pascal, that revenge was self-termination. 
but for others, it can be mass slaughter. In the case of the character 9S, he suffers two existential blows that put oh him on a murderous God. crusade. Later on in the game, he uncovers unsettling information, which suggests that the Council of Humanity on the Moon was established by the gone. android military, when it should be the other way around. When he confronts his commander about this, she casually and quickly confirms the information's validity, leaving no time for 9S to make the logical deduction that humanity has been extinct for thousands of years. But yep. why the lie? Well, if you don't have something to fight for, to strive for, then what's the point of going on living in this war-torn, miserable world? And now 9S, somebody who has fought his entire life for humanity, finds out that all his for efforts the were for naught. Worse the yet, androids already he goes existed. to tell 2B, the android that he not so subtly had strong feelings for the entire game, she is mercifully killed by the android A2. After she was infected with the logic virus. Naturally, having his two sole reasons for living eliminated in the same day was too much for 9S to handle, and he figures the only way he can justify his continued existence is killing as many this machines revenge. as he can, as a symbolic form of cosmic revenge. With these various characters, Nier Automata illustrates the impossibility of this philosophical conundrum. One can try to create one's own values without God, but the game shows multiple incidences where this goes wrong on account of human, or in this case, mechanical imperfection. But embracing God's existence has its own problems as well, and can lead to things like zealotry or a misinterpretation of gospel, or resentment at God when the pain of life becomes too much to bear. Ultimately, the right choice forever eludes us, and if there is a god who cursed us with this cryptic puzzle, the confusion and pain that arises from seeking an answer in vain would be enough to make somebody want to kill him. Though there are other games that tackle this type of existentialism in very powerful ways, games like Soma, Pathologic 2, none of them manage to cover as much ground as Nier Automata does, while also making the ideas accessible to a variety of audiences and preserving their intense emotional difficulty. It is a comp- Oh, the pain! <laughs> Oh, no, Prehensive yet paradoxically simple summation of centuries of philosophy, all within a parable about machines. But I think the best thing of all is that the game was bold enough to be honest about the problem, to acknowledge that neither side of the debate has an all-encompassing answer, and furthermore, it trusted that the gamer would know how to respond when all the information was given to them. At the end of the game, when the androids and machines are all dead, the credits will begin to roll. Yeah. At this point, you can engage in a minigame where song. you can try to shoot all the names in the credits while dodging incoming attacks. Quickly, the gamer will realize the literal impossibility of yeah. shooting all the names without dying. When you do die, messages will pop up on screen. At first, these messages will taunt up. you asking you to accept defeat, or admit no. that your actions are meaningless. This is not but pointless. after a few attempts, you will begin to receive messages. Yo, thank you so much for the tier 3! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Just subscribed. Yo, huge, huge! Thank you so much! It's from real people, real gamers from all over the world, encouraging you to keep going. If you choose to continue, the gamers who came before you will lend their data in the form Literally. of extra power and enable- Literally! The other people's game data! Other people's game data are here giving you another attempt to continue to get to the true ending! Bro! I cannot with how fucking insane this is! I cannot!
<laughs> I'm almost on YouTube, but first time on here. Welcome in, welcome in! ...telling you to defeat all the names in the credits. Before the game ends, you are offered the chance to help somebody else in the way that those other players helped you. But in order to do so, you, you have your to sacrifice uh, your, your save data. File. If you're inclined to do this, the game will remind you that this will be a thankless act. The person you are helping might be somebody that you would intensely dislike if you met them. Still, you are invited to make a loving, compassionate sacrifice for a complete stranger. After playing a game that made Beautiful. you stew for so long in the misery of existence, in the possibility that life truly is meaningless, maybe life is nothing but pain with no transcendent purpose. But in this moment, you can choose the one thing that might have the power to transcend even that potential reality. And as simple as it might seem, that thing is love. No other game has made me feel as much despair or as much hope as Nier Automata did. For that alone, <laughs> yeah. I would consider it the most profound game of all time. But there are all the other aforementioned layers, amongst others, that I wasn't able to fit into the flow of this video. But at the end of the day, this is just my opinion. I invite all of you to continue to argue for alternative games in the comments section below. But please, we're all video game fans here. Please be civil and constructive with your comments. Please give this video a like if you liked it, that helps me out a lot. And make sure to check out either of the videos you see on screen now for more near related content. Until next time, remember to stay safe genius. and stay yellow. Yellow? Bro. What a... That was beautiful. I, I like that. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that a lot. Holy shit. It's the end of the video. Safe to come back. <laughs> Nothing really comes close. That is true. That is very true. Nothing really does come close. And the music in Nier is amazing. I'm pretty sure Bale gave me more despair. I haven't gotten to Bale yet. I have not. Wow. Wow. Great video, chat. Great video. I don't know, I have to check if I can make this a reaction video if it makes sense. I will have to check after. So, if it is, thanks for watching YouTube. Give the original video 